Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games today, back into Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our Let's Play by email with the devilish Mr. Lodrick, and it is now March 27th, and we are going to see the combat resolutions for March 27th and March 28th of 1942, so March almost drawing to a close into April I always feel like April is a big turning point in this game because you can start upgrading more ships, the allies are getting more and more material, uh, and you're getting material that can match up with the Japanese a little bit in certain places, uh, not, not quite in China, but uh, in other places. Now, Lodric sits on the doorstep of Rangoon, Palembang, Batavia, he's now taken Port Moresby, uh, so things are very serious on our end. Uh, you really can't go much further, and so it's good that we're getting to what I hope is a turning point. We'll see. But let's check out the combat resolution, see what happened this time. Uh, March 27th, March 28th, 1942. Now, Lodric did give me somewhat of an ominous message at the start of this turn, so we'll see if something catastrophic happened. I don't, I don't think it was that, but I think he takes a town that he was very happy about, but we'll see. He's now taken Hami, and that's a problem. He's gaining a lot of points up there in northern China. I'm actually sending a lot of forces that way, whether it be towards Lan Chao, uh, Sining, uh, or up north, Hami and beyond, because he's picking up 100 or 200 points by taking those towns with no resistance. And so we can cut him off up there, I hope. We'll see. It's going to take a little while. Uh, I mean, you're talking a lot of kilometers to get up to those areas. Uh, and he's just sent one force up there to take them. Very smart on his part, uh, but we're going to try to counter it. Now he's taken Lan Chao in China, which is huge for him. It's a huge point gain for him, although signings even more, which is very close to Lan Chao. But um, we're really going to fight over that because those are a lot of points that uh, you'd never want to give up in China. He's kind of going the roundabout version of, of the China battle, which is he's not taking us on directly at places like uh, Cheng Chao, for instance, or Hen Yang. Uh, instead, he's going around and picking up points. Again, very smart, uh, because often China turns into a stalemate, but he's picking up points in places, you know, we can counter, I hope. Now, we were picking up ships off of Adu there, or uh, North Mail, which is interesting because his carriers were off Colombo, but it's almost as if he's reversed course. Uh, yeah, and it looks like he has, actually. Looks like he's coming back to North Mail. Uh, that could be interesting. Okay, uh, the bombing starts here in China, as we see every turn. Uh, this group, okay, so I was talking about this land chow. This is signing. This is worth like 300 points, I believe. Uh, land chow is also worth a lot of points. And so what he's done is instead of just, you know, busting in here to Changsha, which a lot of people will do, uh, he's going up and around. Uh, I kind of like the idea. Uh, for his perspective, not from ours really, but he's picking up, this will be like, I think five or 600 points up here that we will lose if we lose these. And I'm just not used to people coming up here and doing that because usually they're so focused on this part of the map. But I have got, you can't see them all here, right? Because we've got fog of war and I think that Lodric sees the same thing that we do for the most part in the combat resolutions. So he's only seeing the units he's got detection levels on. We actually have a lot more and a lot more coming down these roads. A lot of those cores I talk about that had come into Chung King, I've sent down this road and we're going to go battle over this. We also just need to protect this path up into the plateau. Uh, and so it's got kind of a double purpose. Now he's bombing uh, this group that's north of Wu Chao. He did, you know, knock us out of Wu Chao last time. We damaged two planes. We take 16 casualties. Well, that's not terrible. What was the weather? Overcast, okay. 
He's going to hit them again. Uh, this time he takes no damage. We take 16 casualties. Now then, we've got a group, this group that was in Yan'an, we're bringing down the road to Cyan. So I was talking about Cyaning. That's Cyaning up here. This is Cyan. Again, a very important base, and we're going to tussle over this. But he's got approximately 150,000 troops in this area, and we just can't mass like that. Or even if we do, uh, it's not nearly to the quality of the Japanese troops, and so it's a problem. 50 casualties. Now, this is about 600 AV coming down the road. We've got 3,000 AV here. Now, I said we couldn't batch. That's not true. This is about 100,000 troops, but they're nowhere near the quality of the Japanese. So even batching, you know, a bunch of units together, we just can't meet his strength if he's running around with, uh, you know, super armies like that. And it goes to show you, if you do play the Japanese side, it's a smart tactic to, instead of spreading out your forces all the way along here, make three or four super forces. Uh, and they're essentially, the Chinese have nothing on the map that can stop a Japanese super force, as I'll call it, something over 100,000 troops. Uh, the, the Chinese just don't have the guns, the AFVs, or the quality of troops it would take to stop that. So, something to keep in mind. All right, now this is interesting. I put some fortresses up in Darwin. I say up in, uh, where we are on the map, it's uh, it's actually down from here. It's down in Darwin. I put some B-17s up here. They've got a, a, night, a 17, a normal range of 17. So they can't quite get over to Port Moresby, but they can get up to Kendari. And he's landing troops here and whatnot. And so we're going to start bombing. This was a ground bomber. Uh, ten, came in at 10,000 feet, or that's what they supposed he was coming in at. It was actually 8,000 feet. Uh, we caused eight casualties on the ground. It was just four fortresses. Uh, but to give him a some, little something to think about. Now, he'll probably move fighters down to Kendari when he sees this. All right, we're sighting aircraft, and of course, we're sighting them all over the map. Japanese aircraft just flying everywhere. Well, we've got a transport task force that was dropping off at North Mail. He noticed that. I'm trying to get the hell out of there, but I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to make it, uh, which would be too bad. That was the base force I was trying to get onto North Mail. Uh, after the last turn, when I saw where they were, I'm trying to get the hell out of there, but I'm not sure if we're going to make it. 35 Bettys, 24 Nels in on, this was the Port Moresby group. They're now sitting in a swamp with no supplies. Uh, as you can see, we don't have a lot of options of where to take them. Two Bettys damaged, 62 casualties on the ground. All right, 17 Ands, 27 Sallies. Uh, this is the group I splintered off here. So I splintered these into two uh, because this had kind of gotten trapped. Now moving through the mountains, this stack, trying to get to this road. And I'm trying to get behind him in certain places and start fighting a little bit more of a partisan war because if he does... if if a Japanese player does mass like this, you have to start cutting his supply where you can. So for instance, I'm coming down this road, which should be affecting his supply, because if you look, his supply into Cyan really has to either come down this road, where we're sitting in this hex, at least we're contesting it, and down this road, right? And so he's got a huge force here and a huge force here, but I've also got units here uh, that are blocking the road. And so I'm hoping, hoping anyway, to cause a supply problem for him. All right, he's bombing this group east of Yan'an again. Uh, 50 casualties on the ground. Now the one west of Yan'an. Like I said, I split these two. Uh, just trying to give him a different look a little bit. Uh, 29 casualties on the ground there.
Lots of snooping and sighting. Yep, yep. I didn't think we were going to get away, uh, and we didn't. So this task force is done for. Uh, well, they're on fire. Uh, we damaged 11. It's actually a much better than I would have expected. Uh, we damaged 11 aircraft here, the Cates and the Vowels. Uh, we did lose a KV, okay, so an anti-sub. We have heavy damage and fires on this AP. This AP was sunk, and this destroyer has heavy damage. Now, these are not super high-value ships here. I mean, all told, this is maybe 20 points. Uh, the problem is we had a base force on the transports. And, you know, we thought he was clearing, but he didn't clear and uh, unfortunately we've taken some real casualties there now again it's a base force you got a lot of them but don't want to lose a thing certainly not like that it's another 20 or 25 points for him i believe actually quite surprised he turned around uh, i thought almost for certain those guys were going to be headed back to singapore because they have had uh, a lot of air miles put on them out here we've damaged a lot of aircraft uh, we've destroyed a lot of aircraft that he'll have to go back and replace uh, but you know it's a smart move by him i mean if you see a transport task force out there that you think you can get to you may as well go for it all right this is at tongu uh, so right here at Tongu, now what's the importance of Tongu? Well, he, he could be trying to get up here and isolate Rangoon, right? Or push all the way up here and cut off the entire Burma Road. Uh, that could be happening. Now, I will say he didn't bring as strong a force here as I thought he would. Um, he's reduced the fortifications to one but we actually hold on there fairly well i thought he was going to send a little bit more and i've got stuff coming down the way here to try to help out we hold strong here but tongu was traditionally where the flying tigers were stationed um you know it's got a decent size airfield and so you know if you fly them out of here you can also cover rangoon right i had transferred our planes over here last turn but when i saw him coming up the road i transferred them back to rangoon now we may have to get them out of rangoon too but i, I transferred them back um here they've got 2879 on the troops four guns but a lot of vehicles so he's obviously uh sent a tank brigade up here or something uh, adjusted once it went through uh, 199 no this is I'm sorry the raw assault value 199 to 141 when it went through the blender it came out 132 to 97 okay uh, so it was one to one and we had fort level two he did re reduce our fort fortifications to one but we hold on here now holy macro you know I mean you look at this and you're like well it was one to one we fought him off uh, what appeared to be pretty well 24 to 707 on the casualties you know those japanese troops are, are crack troops for the most part okay uh we got a big battle south of cyan there these are two huge armies going at it um he's just doing a bombardment attack probably luckily i i don't know this you know he's got more av here maybe than we do we have about 3,000 av, but he's just uh, lobbing shells at us Okay, he took 27 casualties, we took 79. You can see the troops out here. He's got 79,000, we have 98, or at least 79,000 we know about. Sometimes when it's a bombardment attack, it does not include all of the troops in the hex, for whatever reason. He's got 739 artillery pieces. We have 480, he's got 250 tanks though. Um, and you can see the raw values, 2816 to 2113, but this was just a bombardment attack. And so, you know, he's softening us up for uh, an assault at some point. Now these guys are battling it out down here in southeastern China. Our guys have been bombed over and over. 
uh, but they're on about equal footing with this Japanese force that's out here. Uh, you can see we've got 14,000 troops. He's got 9,000. Now, again, this was just a bombardment attack. Now it's Kagayan, and I have a feeling... Nope, we hold on. Wow, we held on to Kagayan for at least this turn, but these guys are just about done, and that will be pretty much it for the Philippines. Uh, attacking force, he's got 28,000 troops. We have 11,000 troops, 254 artillery for him. When uh, you, you put it all together, he's got an adjusted value of 475. We're at 239. We did have a, a fort level... Two, although they reduced that before the battle, we have good terrain and good leaders out here. So he takes 2,232 casualties, and we only take 376. We have gotten a lot of mileage out of Kagayan here. We have these seagulls that have been flying out of here. They've sunk two ships uh, that we know about. Um, and this, nice result for us for once on the ground. Uh, this is Kendari. He was like, yeah, he's going to capture Kendari. And off we go from Kendari. They're retreating. They'll get up here to Kalaka. We'll sit there, and then he'll come take that out. But we have now lost Kendari. Did he take any losses? He took 78 casualties. We took 703. So a lot of lopsided battles here. Okay, this is just outside of Batavia. This is the group that got kicked out of Bo uh, Bodawang. And now they're trying to get back to Batavia, but they're going to get hit hard here. Oh, I'm surprised. I'm actually very surprised they didn't surrender. They just hopped over into Batavia. Okay, we'll take that. Uh, the Japanese took 92 casualties. We took 579. Okay, well, that's... Uh, Pretty much the end of March 27th, as usual, a lot of action, a lot of it on the ground this time. Uh, his carriers did find a transport task force to our horror, but, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't one of the big ones, you know. We didn't lose an infantry regiment. It was part of a base force. We even got part of the base force down in North Mail, uh, but still it's going to end up, you know, costing us a bit. And that's a super aggressive move, obviously, on his part to double back like that. You know, uh, Lodrick knows we we lost a carrier and a battleship up at Bombay. The British fleet just is not strong enough to stop him doing anything at this point. Uh, we do have some torpedo bombers at Colombo, but, you know, he can overwhelm us in the air. And so he's just acting not very scared. <laughs> now, we have bombed a couple of his battleships uh, and actually hit a couple of them, although I don't think we've taken one down. All right, now it truly is March 28th. You saw we got, had some things come in. We also had a destroyer go on refit at uh, Cape Town. Uh, and so I'm trying to cycle those refits in because when they refit uh, the first time through, that's when the Allies can really uh, start, you know, challenging the Japanese anyway. But they've got to get that anti-aircraft up a little bit before you can really challenge the Japanese at sea. Yeah, we're going to lose the rest of those ships out there. Uh, I was hoping hoping they could make it out. I, th I think they got close. It looked like when he bombed us, we had, uh, you know, we were about six or seven uh, hexes away uh, from him. But now, you know, of course, those carrier task forces can close on you very quickly because almost every ship in them has a 30-plus speed, 30-plus knots, at a transport, that transport group was probably got 12 or 14 knots, so he can, you know, come in on us really fast. So they were probably just never going to get away. Uh, bad timing on our part. Probably should have given it another turn before I tried to come into North Mail. That was maybe a little uh, aggressive, a little loose. 
Oh, oh, ho, ho, ho. Here we go. Uh, interesting. Uh, he has got a task force down here. Now, let me tell you what's going on here. I brought two British battleships over from Cape Town. Okay, you can also see, I think these are light cruisers and two destroyers. He has got this group that's out here trying to stop our shipping into Perth. Now, this is going to be interesting. These are brand new British battleships, the Resolution and the Ramillies. Uh, as you can see, he's only got two cruisers. We should win this battle. We've got two light uh yeah two light cruisers two battleships against two cruisers and four destroyers we also have a couple of destroyers out here but if the resolution can get going here uh or the romillies with the big guns we should blow these guys out of the water that would be our first really really big victory at sea this is what i was hoping for is to catch him now we have a light cruiser of course on fire uh <laughs> I don't know what kind of lucky dice that uh, he has. I'm going to just kind of let this play out. We haven't really seen a ship battle. Uh, it says belt armor hit on the Enterprise. Okay, so we've got a light cruiser that's in a little bit of trouble, but we've also got uh, the Japanese cruiser got hit. Oh, that's what I saw, the belt armor, because the Enterprise had already been hit. So we now have a Japanese cruiser on fire. And now we've got a Japanese destroyer on fire. He was not, he, I'm sure he was thinking, oh, we're going to run into, you know, a cargo task force out here. Uh, nope, not exactly, my friend. So we finally sprung a little bit of a, a trap on him. I was bringing these battleships down here just for this purpose. I was thinking we may catch him up here, you know, at the northern part of Australia. Let's see if we can get any more on here. Still, you know, we've got his cruiser on fire, a destroyer on fire. You can see, oh, torpedoes in the water. Ship side penetrated. So we've now hit this destroyer again. Range closes to 11,000 yards. Uh, once you get into this game, oh, we just hit the kimono again. So the kimono, it, or kumano, I don't want to say a kimono. It's a kumano is now hit. And the Ramilly is going to get the big guns going here. I, I love to watch this, you know, once you kind of understand the game. Uh, he, you could see the guns blast off their superstructure hit. Explosion in the superstructure. So we've got a ship that's about to go down. So we hit that destroyer. Now we're going back after the Kamano. And we've hit that yet again. Fire in the superstructure. Uh-oh, but the Ramillies is now hit. Uh, okay, well, we don't like that. We've got a battleship that's hit. Now, that's heavy fires. We're just on fire. Uh, we can't let him go. We've got to win this battle. Um, we caught him dead to rights, and we can't have it where we lose a battleship uh, when we really, really should have had the advantage. Well, now the resolution's on fire. Okay, but now we've hit his other cruiser. What a battle this is. The resolution superstructure was hit. The Brits got to live up to their name as king of the seas. Both of his cruisers are fully on fire. Well, we just hit the Megami again with a torpedo that time. Now, we don't know what kind of damage this is. The only, you know, indication is these are obviously heavy fires. This just means it's on fire. Well, uh, you know, that, that doesn't tell you a whole lot. I mean, it tells you that they've been damaged, but it doesn't tell you everything you need to know. I mean, it could be that we've just taken very minor damage here. Gosh, that's what I'm hoping. Uh, or it's possible, you know, these things are going to sink, but let's, let's hope not. Fires on the main deck. Oh, now we've got heavy fires here in the Megami. Yeah, this thing's going to go down. 
uh, he's in trouble. He's been hit over and over now. This is who's firing. This is who's being targeted. Uh, as fascinating as this is, I want to see uh, how this ended up. So I'm going to go ahead and escape out of here. And you can see <laughs> there's, we had a lot further to go. I don't want the whole episode to be there. Hello, so. all you poor GIs and Marines. This is Orphan Anne at Radio Tokyo, bringing you some hot oh music and another blow to your morale. Today, our high command announced that the Imperial Navy has achieved another great victory near Perth. With oh, the sinking of two so. carriers, a battleship, and numerous cruisers and destroyers. <laughs> the total misinformation. Uh, what is this? 2022? We've got misinformation everywhere. Uh, the Ramillies. Now, he, they certainly didn't take out a couple of carriers or a battleship. We have the Ramillies on fire. The Resolution's on fire. Uh, the Enterprise is on fire, and we had a shell hit to a destroyer. Now, somehow, with his two cruisers, he's only got the cruiser on fire. Now, this is, again, fog of war, but we're not showing anything sunk, and our two battleships are on fire. Now, I think that we got really the short end of the stick of that combat resolution. Uh, I was really excited when I saw it come up on the screen. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have been. He's looking all over in that North Mail area to see if we have more ships there, uh, but we don't. That's really funny that Tokyo Rose uh, had so much misinformation there. Oh, we report that his submarine was hit. Uh, by one of our torpedo bombers. Let's hope that's true. Uh, we won't know. That's kind of what happened over by Pearl Harbor. We we reported that like eight or ten uh, subs had been hit off of Pearl Harbor, but we have no way of knowing what actually went down. Okay, here come his bombers again. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, 35 casualties reported there of this group that's coming down the road. And you can see I'm starting to get Cyan a little bit uh, surrounded. Um, will it do any good? Well, I guess we'll see. Uh, this is a sweep over Changsha. Gosh, that darn bad. I really thought that we would uh, sink all of those Japanese ships there. Now, he is a long way from port, so we'll see if those ships can make it back. And I mean, it's not like we have to go straight back to port if we don't have a ton of damage. So we may just re-engage them. We'll see. Nine casualties reported, uh, more bombing. Okay, 40 casualties there. Now, he had told me that Tokyo Rose was on the airwaves, and so I thought we had lost a major town, because usually she'll do her announcements, you know, like when you lose Singapore, for instance. I thought maybe we had lost Rangoon, and I was thinking, how in the heck did that happen? Uh, but no, instead, uh, she's claiming two carrier and a battleship kill. You can see down here, this is where it says the class, uh, the C-1 class submarine is reported hit. So we had a torpedo bomber that came back here. Uh, it was a Catalina, actually two, uh, yeah, Catalina 1 uh, was out there. So one of our, you know, naval search uh, recon planes, really. The fortresses are going to hit Kandari again. Did they do any good? They did not. Now, we're only bombing at 8,000 feet, but our bombers aren't very good. If nothing else, we're kind of training them here uh, to get them a little better. Nothing better than actually doing it for training purposes. Man, I tell you, every single turn of this game has just got surprises. You know, if you're a fan of this game or if you're even just halfway in interested in it, uh, this has been <laughs> this has been everything I hoped for to put on the channel. Uh, Lodric has been a great opponent so far. Just constant action, constant things happening, and that's how you have to play as the Japanese player uh, if you're going to win. You just can't sit around uh, and turtle up. 
wow, he really brought a lot uh, turned back. I mean, he doubled back towards North Mail in that area. All right, this is us sighting all of his ships. All right, he's got some Nell bombers out of Singapore, I suppose. We didn't pick them up till here, but I would imagine that's where they're coming out of. Trying to bomb this group that's, you know, trying to get actually back down here to Padang. Uh, eight casualties on the ground, we'll take that. What was the weather like? Moderate rain, hard to bomb in that. Betty's doing the same. Uh, 19 casualties there. Zeros on the sweep over Cagayan. Uh, like I said, those seagulls that were based here have hit a few ships, and so <laughs> he's sweeping out over the top. Uh, Betty's out of what I assume is all the way back at Rabal. I doubt he's using his carrier groups to hit this, or his carrier group. 27 casualties, one damaged bomber. Uh, 18 Betty's in on this Moresby group. Uh, 18 casualties reported there. 23 Nell's in on this group. 32 casualties there. Now those guys are going to starve out anyway. Um, they just have nowhere to go. Uh, 43 bombers in on the group east of Yan'an. This is the group just north of Wu Chow. Now I have brought some more troops down the road here and bringing even more. I'm going to try to tie him up here. I'm also thinking about bringing some troops out of Hangyang and trying to come back down towards Kukong. Uh, just to put some pressure on him, I'd rather he focus here than in the north, uh, really. One damage, Lily. Okay, uh, nine casualties on the ground there. 28 casualties on the ground there. He's just bombing them unmercifully. And the two stacks trying to get out of Yan'an. Uh, no losses that time. He's up there. We're, I say he. We. We're up in the mountains. Get in a cave or something and uh, avoid the bombing. All right. 17 lilies. We took 17 casualties there. All kinds of plane sightings, as usual. Oh, excellent. All right, I put some Mitchells, some B-25s, in at Koapang here, just for this very purpose. He's starting to get down here on top of us, right? He will eventually come take Koapang. But he's got a lot of ships floating around out here that haven't been harassed at all. And to the extent he's trying to resupply down here or land on Timor or East Timor. Um, I, I just wanted to have some Mitchells in here. So we did find a little sub chaser. Uh, unfortunately, no hit. I'm sure he'll be a little more wary about coming down that way after seeing that. Now he's going to bring fighters probably into Ambon or someplace like that. Um, And then we'll, we'll just take those back to Darwin, those Mitchells. But for now, I like having them out there uh, at Koapeng because they can certainly harass anything coming down Darwin way. All right, we're going to get to the land phase here. We've got some plain subgroups that are combining May not get any uh, land battle. We we had several last time or, la or yesterday. Yep. Oh, well, here we go. I always forget exactly when that pops up. All right, he's coming after Tongu again. Let's hope we hold. We do because I I have two 
bigger, well, I say in Burma, relative to Burma, we've got two decent sized forces that I'm bringing down here and something out of Mandalay. So I'm, I'm rushing reinforcements here. Now we can't get here soon enough because, you know, 96 to 77, but we did, uh, no, we lost our fort level. Okay, so this started off as a two. He's taken it to a zero. That was really helping us on the adjusted value. As you can see, he took 47 casualties. We took 665. These just aren't good troops out here, really. And uh, we're paying the price. All right, uh, Japanese bombardment attack here in this hex, uh, just south of Cyan. Two pretty evenly matched from a manpower standpoint armies. We've got him by about 20,000 troops, but of course the Japanese troops are much better. So he's going to try to soften these guys up, disrupt them, you know, damage enough units that can't be uh, reconstituted before he launches his assault. Well, come on. This is a long bombardment. Don't freeze, game. All right, I'm going to hit done. Uh, yeah, again, we're showing 79,000 troops for the Japanese. We have 98,000, but he's got, you know, tanks and everything else. He took 63 casualties. We took 154. Now he's uh, bombarding down here again in south, in the southeastern part of the country. Uh, nothing there, no damage. Now he's going to try to take Kagayan again. Now we really bloodied his nose last time, uh, but... You know, it's only a matter of time here. We're running out of men. Reduced to zero, they capture Kagayan. And so we'll be kicked out uh, or surrender here. Looks like they're all going to surrender. And he has essentially taken all of the Philippines. We have a few scattered bases, uh, but he's really taken the, the Philippines at this point. Um, we had our seagulls got destroyed. Gosh darn it. 825 casualties. 13,000 casualties. Uh, of course, a lot of that are guys that surrendered, but we just can't hold on at Kagayan. He had a very strong force there eventually. All right, now it's just going to be the expansions and what we get in. Uh, so the Philippines is gone. Now I will say uh, he's maybe a little behind schedule in taking Kagayan and Mindanao itself. Um... Just a little bit, though. Just a little bit. He's certainly a little late in the Dutch East Indies, I will say. Although he's in a very strong position around Rangoon and in China and at Port Moresby, right? I mean, he's he's exceeded what the Japanese did uh, in Papua New Guinea already uh, because he's taken Moresby. So, you know, but a little behind, I would say, in, around the Dutch East Indies and Palembang, you know, Sumatra. Usually Japanese players just run for that because it's got so much fuel, oil, and refinery capacity. Well, this was a really interesting turn. We had the good naval battle, uh, lots of land battles this time. Uh, we took the brunt of the losses, that's for certain. Uh, but, you know, eventually you were always going to lose all those troops on the Philippines. So it's not like, oh gosh, you know, the, you know that wasn't going to happen and now we're in terrible shape. I mean, you're going to lose the Philippines and all the troops there. Uh, at some point, uh, you just try to make it last as long as possible. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this. Boy, I know I did. Uh, Strategy Gaming Dojo. Talk to you next time. Have a great one.